believe that I can't believe that I can't this is the world that this is now this is the world. a world exist I think and I can't believe that this is the world I now know a world where monsters exist this maglev once took me to the truth and now I hope it brings me now I hope it brings my destiny
I have sacrificed my very life to reveal these secrets. The experiments I have conducted over the years have taken their toll on my mortal coil. Science has at last failed me, as I am unable to heal my body. But my mind is still active, and it shall serve me to the end. I have done what I have done, so my work will not be in vain. It shall live through the ages, and I shall be remembered through it. But I take credit for only what I have achieved here, deep in the bowels of this institution. The work was vast. My name is Dr. Winston Cray. I have been here since the beginning. My life's work has been to untangle the mysteries buried within the DNA of man and the others. To fulfill a pact and in turn become the linchpin for a new world order. Circumstances have changed. For the uninitiated, I am Mr. White. My real name is unimportant. I am the facilitator of Dreamland. Yes, the maker of dreams. I like that. It's poetic. I have sacrificed my very life to reveal these secrets. I first met Dr. Winston Cray during the Second World War. His brilliance in early DNA research earned him a leading role in developing biochemical weapons. The success of the Manhattan Project was inconsequential compared to the success we achieved. But our projects were never approved for moral implications. So unbeknownst to Dr. Cray, I engaged in several experiments of my own in the Midwest. Oh, the horrors I inflicted led to so many wonderful discoveries. But then the alien craft crashed in Roswell, and things took an interesting twist. When I discovered the biochemical marvels hidden in the one called Edgar, I sent Dr. Cray to work immediately. The moon landings nearly four decades ago were part of a misdirection by our government to confuse the public regarding alien encounters. We've certainly been to the moon, but the mysteries and horrors found there would never make for quaint historical quotation. When I was first assigned to Hazmat Team Bravo, I thought Ramirez was the kind of by-the-book military who resented babysitting a team of lab rats. But mission after mission, Ramirez proved he deserved our respect. Not because of the bars on his shoulder, but because he respected us and the work we did. He was our captain, and we would have followed him anywhere. Once, after cleaning up a hot zone in Bisbee, Arizona, Crispy and I had to spend 10 days in quarantine. By day three, I wanted to punch him in the face. By day seven, I did. In the dust-up, I slammed my head against the table, a concussion and 17 stitches. Since we were in quarantine, Crispy had to patch me up. It took me another week to recover, and Crispy stayed with me the entire time and didn't say a word. When I was first assigned to Hazmat Team Bravo, McCann and I went to a strip club, and he actually brought a book. I, I gave a stripper 50 bucks to take it from him and put it somewhere, you know, interesting. She did. McCann didn't even blink. He just asked her not to lose his place. Later, I asked him if he got the book back. 
He grinned and shrugged and he said, uh, he said that chapter four would never be the same. <laughs>